Hi everyone, thanks for joining in. I'm excited to have Catherine Lee joining me today. Hi Catherine. Hello and thank you so much for having me. So a little bit about Catherine. Um, Catherine divides her time among numerous fictional worlds behind her keyboard. In past lives, she has sold international satellite capacity, worked in IT recruitment and run her own communications store. When Catherine isn't writing, she's dog wrangling, wrestling with technology or going crazy trying to maintain control of the yard. She's the author of the popular Elizabeth McLean series of thrillers on Amazon and also writes dark, gritty thrillers under the pen name C.J. Lee. Um, so thanks, Catherine, for joining us. Just wondering if you want to start off by telling us a bit about your books. Uh, I started writing in two th about 2013 and I started with the Elizabeth McLean um, series. Initially, it was only supposed to be a standalone mm -hmm. and I took it out to market and I, I really worked trying to market it. But in 2013, getting an agent overseas was just murder. You had to actually package up your... Um, your sample and oh, post, and post it. it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. look, it was just diabolical. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes they get lost in the post. It mm -hmm. cost about twenty dollars to send it, mm -hmm. and, and it was a while before they actually um, opened up to email mm -hmm. querying. Mm -hmm. And it was about the time I had finished writing um, the Candidate's Daughter, which was the first one, and I had um i went to the, our local library and we had hugh howie there and hugh howie wrote wool okay and and he it, it was sci-fi but he was so fascinating because he had started on amazon and then got picked up by an agent mm. and then became very successful mm. so i thought oh that sounds brilliant so i decided to follow that trail so I started on Amazon, published my first one, The Candidate's Daughter, and that came out on Amazon amongst the movers and shakers, and it did really well. And I thought, oh, mm -hmm. I've made it. I've mm -hmm. made it. Hurrah. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I hadn't. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the best advice was write another book mm -hmm. and write another book and write another mm -hmm. book. So I ended up writing uh, Child of the State, which is the second in the series. Mm -hmm. And then I wrote, uh, I wrote as one under CJ Lee, um, called The Contestant, which is very gritty and very, I loved it because it was a psychopath who goes out and murders people. Um, and he lives by online competitions and he's not afraid to go out and murder um, somebody who won the prize he wanted. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> yeah. And so then he discovers a $10 million um treasure hunt online treasure hunt um but then when he enters he finds he's not the only psychopathic killer oh, in the, in, oh, the really? in the arena okay. no so it, it was a lot of fun to write um but the elizabeth mclean ones really did a lot better so mm. then i wrote the um the third in the series which is called a stolen woman um and then I thought, you know, I'd like to bring some of my writing home. And so I wrote a, a book called Last Scene Leaving, which is also on Amazon. And it was a, a kind of a detective one. Mm. Now, a lot of my earlier books, I had a disabled daughter mm. and I lost her in 2013. Oh, mm, um, sorry in 2014, sorry. Mm. And uh, I wanted to write stories with people with disabilities in them mm. and so with last scene leaving i wrote my pro protagonist as a blind district attorney oh okay who's, who's the only person who can find her dirty rotten ex-fiance mm. who came back to new zealand and went missing so that was a lot of fun to write and then i thought you know i really enjoyed having some of my books in New Zealand around things I'm really familiar mm. with. So I decided to write a police procedural set in New Zealand 
and that's my latest one. It's called The Water's Dead. And it's positioned as um, New Zealand's answer to um, Vera Stanhope. Okay, yeah. And, <laughs> and I want to mention that I have just read The Water's Dead and really enjoyed reading it and loved um, the New Zealand setting and like the reference the very new zealand references to things and that as well thank you can you tell me so i uh, like this is the first book of yours that i read are uh, and from what you said am i right and they're not all set in new zealand all of your books no no so no. Where when, are... I first, when i first started mm. writing the first advice i got was do not set a book in new zealand mm. nobody would read it mm. And I thought, oh, well, that's great. Where am I going to set it? <laughs> and so I set it in, I, I was on an online forum. Mm. And it was a, it was an online forum, forum called Orthonomy. And I don't know whether anybody remembers that. It was where writers could go and post them. And, and I think it was run by one of the big six at the time. Okay. Who, would, who would pluck out manuscripts that they would oh. really like. So it was mm. a great opportunity for authors to showcase their work. And I ran across a young guy who lived in Ohio who wrote, he wrote um, uh, humorous sci-fi. And we got on really well and, and we chatted a lot. And, and I thought, you know what? If I wrote my book set in Ohio, mm -hmm. I've got all the information there. So that's what I did. And he stopped writing. And I kept writing books about Ohio a place I had never been to. Oh, wow. And, <laughs> yeah. and have you, did you end up going there eventually? I did. I've mm. been there twice. The first time I was unconscious. Okay. And the second, time, <laughs> the second time I managed to step over the state line. Because the first time I was on a train at three, mm. three o'clock in the morning. Oh, I was going so through Ohio through. Okay. across the mass. Yeah. yeah. And then I went to stay in Pennsylvania in Pittsburgh with mm. a friend of mine, a writer friend. And um, she said, you know what? We're going to go to Ohio. <laughs> and I said, oh, how <laughs> fabulous. So we leapt in the car and we drove up. And we got to the state line and I stepped over and she said, you are now in Ohio. <laughs> fabulous. So we took photos next to her, welcome to mm. Ohio. And then we went home. Okay. But... <laughs> But it means a heck of a lot of research. Mm. Writing in a different country, and particularly my first book, was um, uh, it, the candidate's daughter is about the abduction of a, the disabled daughter of a Senate wannabe. Mm. And so then I had to go and learn all about American politics. Yeah. Mm. So I really set myself up for a lot of research. Mm. But I actually really enjoy research now. Initially, I thought, oh, my goodness, what am I doing? But you learn so much. Mm. Um, for example, in Last Seen Leaving, um, the reason my, my the dirty, rotten um, fiancé went missing, he came to New Zealand to buy one of the Skyhawks that the government was selling a while oh, back. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. And I, I learned all about how you package a Skyhawk into a mm. container mm. or two okay. containers. <laughs> <laughs> so the crazy thing you useful, learn. That's useful to learn. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I'm going to use that every day, you know. But at least it's a lovely anecdote. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so how many so... books have you now written set in New Zealand? Uh, the Water's Dead was the first. Oh, that, that was the um, first one. Okay. The first that I've published. Yeah. Um, and I'm about a third of the way through the set, through the next in the series. It's designed to be a series. Okay. And I, what I've done with it is, I really used to love Ed McBain, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure whether you're aware. Ed McBain wrote the 87th Precinct, and that was what Hill Street Blues was based oh, on. Okay. Yeah. So you had a whole lot of cops. You didn't just have one protagonist. Mm. You had a lot of cops in there that you would follow. And in actual fact, the precinct was the main character. So this is what I want to do with, with 
the water's dead because no police investigation is just going to be a DI mm. and a DS mm. running around asking questions. Mm. And I see that a lot of um, a lot of the television programs are now involving more like the intel analyst and and you know other characters. Yeah. But with this, I really wanted to follow New Zealand police procedure mm. as closely as I could. So I've got, you know, sometimes a follow off on the other characters like Bowman and mm. NRA and and so they're off doing parts of the investigation that Nighty isn't. Mm. So um, mm. that's why that's how I've structured it. Mm. So the next book will have the same characters. In okay. It. Oh, that's good to hear. And have yeah. you have you found um, easier setting it in New Zealand somewhere that you're a lot more familiar with? It's easier and it's harder mm. because you. it's really weird because when I first started writing, I thought, oh, you know, I've got to describe the scenery. And it's so familiar. Mm. You actually overlook some of the beauty that's that's just around you, like mm. the waterfalls and, and the toy toy and the beaches and, you know, the, the scrub that's over the hills and the the little nooks and crannies and and even all the one-way bridges mm. that are, they just litter the streets mm. even the main streets in in the far north mm. and um i really had to pull myself together and go out and think i've really got to describe this scenery without taking it for granted yeah and that was a that was the tough thing um another tough thing was i actually initially began to write the story set in the town I live in. Okay. And then I began that series and somebody said to me, oh, what's your book about? And I said, oh, it's about this young woman that's bludgeoned. And they went, oh, you can't write that. You can't. And I said, why not? They said, that really happened. I said, no, no, uh, this is not that story. Mm. I know the story that they're talking about. And it's mm. not a story. It's what really happened. Mm. They said, no, you still can't. So I thought, rats. And it, it really knocked me. Mm. And then one day I thought, why don't I just make it a fictional town? Yeah. And yeah. so that's yeah. what I did. And the other thing you've got to be very careful of is um, in New Zealand, you know, they say in the world there's six degrees of separation. Yeah. I think in New Zealand there's That's about two degrees. Yeah, exactly. Everybody <laughs> knows each other. Yeah. And so you write a book, you have got to be really careful that you mm. don't use somebody's name inadvertently. Mm. And or or the that people will think, oh, she's writing about me. Mm. I'm the person that lives down that road. She's writing about mm. me. And um, so yeah, it's it's far better. And in fact, there's a couple of parts where I've deliberately shifted towns so that it makes it less. And and I've had a couple of people say, oh, you made a mistake. I don't know. <laughs> I actually, actually shifted that town just to knock it out a little bit. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And I've got some people watching, just wanted to remind people watching, if you've got any question for Catherine, please type it in comments and I can read it out. Um, Belinda's got a question for you. Oh, okay. She's wondering if um, you've written any books set in Australia. No, and I wouldn't even try it. Mm. I've been reading, and you'll find out when you ask the question, I've read a couple of Chris Hammers. Oh, I yes. Love, yeah. Love. Mm. I love Jane yeah. Harper. Yeah. And, you know, when you write about a place, I know I've, I've written about the States, mm. um, but by goodness, you've got to get it right. Mm. You know, you really have. And even it, it was funny because the candidate's daughter, somebody wrote a review that said, isn't it lovely to have a Clevelander writing about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never even been there. So how I did that, I don't know. But I cannot write the kind of um, the kind of fiction as you get with some of the the actual um, Clevelanders. Mm. You can get really gritty and backstreet, and you do, you just mm. cannot get that atmosphere. Mm. So writing in New Zealand, I can get that atmosphere. 
mm. but it's very hard to fake it for a different country. Yeah, and you've, you've yeah. spent a lot of a lot of time there because people pick up the vibe mm. out of a book. They pick up that, you know, the vibe of what you're describing. They can see it mm. and and that's hard to fake mm. and that's interesting what you said about them thinking that you were from there because i would expect um like even the way your characters spoke or something like that 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 would be a lot different than how you would hear people speaking in new zealand is that something you researched or um it's funny because i tell people that i write in american mm. and it is there are things about the American, um, I, I, all the states have different little, um, you know, uh, sayings or expressions, yeah. or, 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 you know, um, but there are little things that a Kiwi mightn't pick up. Mm. Like, for example, Kiwis would say, oh, I'm going around to somebody's place. An American would never say that. They, it was or almost never, particularly, you know, where, as far as where I've researched, mm. they would say, I'm going around. Oh, okay. Because round to Americans is round. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's just, it's just those little idiosyncrasies mm. in the speech patterns. So, and I write in American, I use a, a US and American um, format on Word mm. to, and that's what I always work on. Mm. I've tried writing programs and I'm just, I'm just hopeless at them. I start writing and I've written something beautifully and then I lose it. Mm. I've got no, no idea where it's gone to in mm. the program. <laughs> so I think I just stick with Word and I'm fine. Yeah, yeah. And can you tell me a bit about what you like reading yourself and maybe if there's something you've been reading lately that you could recommend to us? Um, I can always recommend Blood on Vines. I think you've oh, had yes, Matt we've had, on. yeah. <laughs> Her and book she was great. Fabulous. Mm. She's got her next one coming out very shortly. Mm. So she is she is just great. And I love her enthusiasm. So she's fabulous. I've been reading Alex Finley, The Night Shift. Okay, just I haven't heard that one. That, so I can't give you a great, mm. um, uh, you know, a, a, a review on it. One of the, as I've said to you, I adore Jane Harper. Mm. And when I first bought, bought The Dry, I was in the States because I used to go to the States every second year before COVID and go to the Boucher Con conferences. And I was, I went with my sister this time and I was in an airport and I thought, oh, I'm desperate for something to read. Then I looked at, oh, The Dry, oh, and I read back and I thought, oh, this looks good. So I bought it and the next thing we're sitting, I'm sitting with my sister and she's going, what are you doing? Are you still reading? No, 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 I'm not reading it. No, no. And, and I just adored the rest of their books. Mm. Um, and as I said, Chris Hammer, I read Scrublands. Mm. That was fantastic. Mm. And I've just read his Treasure and Dirt. Yeah, which is, that's a good, oh, yeah. That is very, very good. Mm. And that's what I mean by you get into the vibe you get the, you know you can taste the dirt you mm. can feel the grit you know on your skin after reading the the storylines and everything that's in there you just know that he knows the place inside out and mm. he's been around those those opal mines and yeah. he knows you know he's really researched it mm. and it's great it's really nice because it takes you to a whole different place mm. yeah so mm. those are the ones i've been reading lately yeah. yeah no thanks for those recommendations we always love getting recommendations oh can i give you one more it's a sure. friend of mine um karen dion the marsh king's daughter okay Fabulous. I haven't, yeah, it's, I haven't. Is she a New Zealand author? Or? No, she's mm. not. She's an American author, um, lives in upstate uh, Michigan, mm. right out. And when she was young, she used to go what they call homesteading with her husband, which is just going out and living 
on the land. Mm. And so she got a lot of um, early uh, experience of living that way. So her book is, I guess you could say, it's a young girl growing up in um, in the right out in the back of beyond oh, okay. in, in the forest mm. of upstate Michigan, never realizing that her mother is a captive. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Mm. And it goes from there. She never realizes that mm. her father has captured her mother mm. wow. and that, that they're both prisoners. So and it's just and so And what was well that called again, though? The Mark. Marsh King's Daughter, Marsh King's and that's Daughter. just okay. about to come out as a movie. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's often it. equated with where the crawdads sing. Yeah, you know, that, that sounds kind about, of. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'll have to have so, a look uh, up that one. Mm, but I'm starting to read a lot of um, New Zealand authors. I'm just reading one by Michael Botor, and he's done some short stories and. The book I'm reading at the moment is They're All Horror. And he's such a great writer, Michael. Um, it's called The Devil Tooker. Okay. And it's there's just these short stories and it's bang, bang, bang. Mm. And you get to the point where you're just thinking, oh, I don't want to read anymore, but I just have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know the, but he's I know a the feeling of those yeah. sorts of books. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's a Kiwi author and, and um, he's been published overseas. So, yeah. Mm. And do you have quite a good community group of authors where you are? Um, let me think. I go down to Auckland a lot with mm. the community in Auckland. Mm. We've got a community in uh, Whangarei, which is about an hour south of here. Mm. There's a few authors around here, but we are a little bit dislocated. Mm. And what we're trying to do is, you know, I've been down to the Whangarei Library a little while ago and did a talk down there. So um, I see Madeline Eskadel quite yeah. a bit. Yeah. And uh, we're going to do some library talks together. Oh, that's great. And, and mm. just format it as a kind of a conversation between two authors mm. and talking about the different ways we work and and what inspires us and things like that. Mm. So I think it could be a really fun way of doing it um, rather than just standing and talking to a crowd. Yeah. 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 No, so, that sounds um, good. Yeah. Mm. And you said before that The Water's Dead, that your next book is a carry-on from that, the one you're writing at the moment. When you yep. started The Water's Dead, is that something that you thought it would become part of a series? or I wanted it to because yeah. I thought it would have it would have legs. I know my target audience. Mm. Uh, I've basically been writing for them with my thrillers. Now, this is... Um, my thrillers are thrillers, they're fast paced, but I've managed to get that kind of thriller essence into the the water's dead as well as it being a police procedural. Mm. So, um, and I did set it up. I don't know whether you noticed at the end, there's just a little wee thing that that kind of indicates there that might there be something be else to come. Yeah, mm. yeah, so that that picks that up again mm -hmm. in this next book and still set in the far north still the same team um slightly different and i'm kind of going in a slightly different direction with it but it's interesting because i wanted to look at all the aspects of police work mm -hmm. that come to play for the cops you know mm -hmm. um yeah mm -hmm. i won't go on anymore or <laughs> you don't want to spoil it too much <laughs> don't want to spoil no. it <laughs> And could you tell me, when writing a series, is there anything special that you've tried to do to make sure that you keep things fresh for both yourself and your readers? I can always remember that Sue Grafton, when she was writing, because I adored her books, mm -hmm. um, she had a secretary who read the books and kept an eye that she did not rewrite things. Yeah. That she didn't actually, by mistake, go and, and write the same thing over again. Mm. And it's really strange because um, when you're writing, you know, you can be writing away and you think, oh, 
I know what I should mention in this book. I'm going to go back and I'm going to put that in. Mm. And you go back and you find you've already done it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's it's the strangest thing because you think, I don't even remember doing that. And so it is very, very easy. Now, people say to me, do you have a bio? I'm, I'm terribly lazy. Mm. I really need to have a complete bio of all of my characters, characters yeah. all their yeah. You know, because yeah. I talk about their partners and their the husbands and mm. wives and what they're doing and their fathers and mm. you know, so they have families in the background. And uh, even this one, I accidentally called one of their wives the wrong name. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have, I, to, I have to I, mention to you, um, yesterday I spoke to an author, and this is the first time I've heard about this, but um, her name was Anne Charles, and she's from the US, and she yeah. actually hires someone who does that for her. She keeps track of all of her characters and all their descriptions and what they look like and everything, and that, that's someone that she hires just to do that for her. What a brilliant idea. <laughs> yeah. What a brilliant idea. <laughs> That's what I, I thought I when I heard it. Because, yeah, mm. yeah. But I just need to stop being lazy and just <laughs> write it down. Write down a, um, a in, in fact, with this one, I've hit the 30%. Mm. And most writers hit the 30% through the book and you kind of hit the wall and you think, is this good enough? Is mm. it this? Is it that? I tell you what, writing is not really good for you. <laughs> <laughs> the best thing for you is I can always remember um, seeing something on Facebook, a writer saying, I hate writing. I love having written. Oh, yes. <laughs> and, and that's what it's about. Once yeah. you've finished, you can go back and you think, oh, I, I know what I've left out there. Oh, and yeah. this. And, you know, you've got the backbone and you can you can really fit everything in mm. between. But I need to go and do that. Um, it, what I'm doing at the moment is I am, because I do quite complex uh, plots, I'm now going through each chapter and figuring out what's happened mm. which direction it's going in where i need to tighten it up a little bit because sometimes you can sort of burble on and think oh i'll take it in this direction and then you think i to just make it a bit more adds a bit more tension mm. i'll put that up there because there are beats when you're writing and you have to follow those beats mm. you know and to keep your tension yeah, and I'm what like you spoke about about your planning and that. I'm wondering when you do your planning at the start, do you know how your novel's going to end? I don't even know how it's going to start. <laughs> <laughs> I usually have an idea. I have something, mm -hmm. and then I just write. Mm -hmm. I just write. I know. I remember write, reading once that that's how Colin Dexter wrote. Mm -hmm. He just started writing and let the let the book take him wherever he wanted to go mm. and um he would just follow it and then back write all the clues into it mm. and he had very complex plots mm. so um no i don't plot if yeah. i plot i end up telegraphing too much so it okay. has to be a surprise for me as well yeah yeah um, and then in saying that then of all your books is it like the same every time or maybe different every time what comes first plot characters or location uh characters i think yeah and you found that mostly the same really come. Mm. yeah mm. because it's it's like when you look at really really good comedy mm. really good comedy usually comes from the character mm. if you've got a fantastic character i mean i'm just harking back to the likes of dad's army oh, yeah, where yeah. they had they had very everyday um uh, you know situations mm. that would happen to a, a home guard but it was just the interaction yeah. between the characters that made it hilarious and in in my case i like to have the different characters with their you know, and they always bring something to the 
to the table mm -hmm. if you you know like for example willis used to be a um a rugby player so he's a big rugged mm -hmm. di but mm -hmm. he's he's really soft hearted and and has come from a different department to you know um online you know sexual abuse of children mm -hmm. and things like and it just made him sick so he wanted another and so he brings something with with that big giant man kind of character and you can put him into situations that um that bring out something in the other characters mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um belinda wonders if you have a favorite character to write let me think I've really enjoyed writing Nairi. Yeah. In the Waters yeah. Dead. I've really yeah. enjoyed it because she's a no nonsense, you know, career driven. She's got her demons, mm. but, you know, and she's always walking the line. And, it, you know, she has conflict with her colleagues. And there's always those things, you know, things never go according to plan, mm. ever. Mm. And, that must be what it's like in real police work. You know, mm -hmm. things come at you out of the out of the um, out of left field, or you've got family commitments that um, that knock you sideways. But you've got to keep on with this this case. You can't mm -hmm. just think, "Oh, look, you know, actually, I think I'll take a holiday in the middle of a case." Mm -hmm. You know, and and we've got such dedicated police force mm. a dead, you know really dedicated officers that w would be out there working day and night you know um for example in the in the water's dead to find somebody that's missing yeah mm. Mm. and kelly wonders if you have a favorite thriller author oh uh let me think let me think well i think it would have to be Jane Harper. Yeah. You know, she is just so great. Mm. Um, I've read a lot of Lee Child. I met him while I was in the States. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 I used to go to these conferences every second year and I was sitting with Ali Griffiths mm. and I went, oh, there's Lee Child. And she went, oh, do you want to meet him? And I went, oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Karen Dion would be another thriller mm. writer that I just love. Mm. But, you know, there's just so many different types, um, you know, anything from Diva to Lahane, they've got different um, skills. Oh, you've got a My doggy dogs there. Are, yeah, <laughs> are being noisy. <laughs> um, but what I like, I like female characters and I get very tired of, and, and I know this is horrible, I get tired of male characters that write female characters as complete ditzes. Yeah, yeah. No, I know what you mean. Or, or by their looks. Yeah. You know, long blonde hair mm. and beautiful eyes mm. and, you know, the slim figure. I, I just get, you know, and it's just, it's like, oh, please, you know, write a real woman. <laughs> mm. No, I totally agree with you on that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And Kim wonders what you enjoy the most about your writing. At the moment, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> when you finish? <laughs> it, no, it is actually pulling all the strings together, all the connections. Mm. And it's really funny because when you get to the end, now with The Water's Dead, I wrote three endings. I oh, could, really? Wow. I could not figure out who mm. done it. And then one morning I woke up and I thought, oh my God, am I stupid? That's who did it. Mm. Of course that's who did it. And that's why. And so that's one of those eureka moments that, mm. that you just love because you think, I'm going to get that because, because I don't think re readers are going to really cotton on to that straight away that's mm. going to be a surprise yeah at the very end they're not going to guess it and yet when you look back through the story and i'd already peppered it with clues in that direction yeah mm. yeah so um that's the that's the favorite thing about writing 
yeah. is knowing that you're one step ahead of your reader. Mm, mm. Mm. No, that's a good answer. <laughs> well, well, thanks so much for chatting with me. I've loved talking to you today. Oh, thank you so much. And um, thanks to everyone who joined in. We had some great questions. Some fabulous questions. And The Water's Dead is not available in digital at the moment, but it is available in paperback at Wit Calls in New Zealand, and it can be ordered online. Okay, and, and is it available other... through Amazon? Uh, no, not through Amazon, but through Wit Calls. Okay, they on and it's W H I T C O U L L S. It's one of our biggest bookstores in mm. New Zealand, and they have it online, and they'd be happy to ship it. Uh, the Elizabeth McLean thrillers are all available digital and paperback through Amazon. Okay, well, thanks for that. And is there a way that people can keep in touch with you as well? Absolutely, on my website, and that's author Catherine Lee, C A T H E R I N E L E A dot com. Well, thanks so much, and um, good luck with your next book. And thank you so much. Hopefully we might talk about that again yeah. in the future. No, that would be great. Thanks, Thanks. so much. Bye, Jackie. everybody. Bye.